All right, apps for light painting. I've got a few to talk about. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here today. We're gonna continue on. We're doing a series here for light painting and making, we're working in a whole different art world at this point. So again, this idea came from one of the resources I use is Facebook. Uh, Miss A, she's a middle school teacher. She was asking about light painting and I, I had so much fun making this video. So I wanted to throw that out there ahead. Thank you so much for that. I, if you guys have an idea, throw it out there. I'd love to make new stuff. So bringing that back to today's class, gotta go through some different apps. Now me, I'm going to find a way to make sure that everybody can do any of these art pieces that we do, just because I wanna make sure that everybody can make art because art's fun. And I've got lots of tools in my in my bag. I have a action cam, I've got the, ah, I've got a DSLR to work with. Uh, but most of us, we're just gonna be using our cell phones. So today we're gonna to be talking about the apps and the tech that we're gonna be using in that. Um, we're also going to be talking about how to bridge the gap because not everybody has uh, all the pro skill sets. So we want to make sure that amateurs to pros, everybody can take, can do this at home uh, from middle school, from the elementary school, the middle school, and the high school levels, all those will be covered today. All right. So first off apps, uh, if you have a dedicated camera for this manual, manual focus is what you guys are going to be using. We'll get into that in a second, but for most of us, we are gonna be using our cell phones. So cell phone photography, what apps do you need? Now, I know these are on iOS and I'm really only dealing with iOS personally just because that's what I got. Uh, double check around for compatible apps in Android and the Play Store. Guarantee they're probably gonna be called the same thing if they're in there and so just kind of search around, but they all kind of do the same gist. Now, the three apps that I used or downloaded was Long Exposure, Slow Camera, and Yamra. Now, Long exposure, I didn't like right off the bat just because I thought the interface was not as user friendly uh, as the other ones and I just was not a big fan of it. You really have to kind of set things up. Um, what are the levels that you guys are going to be using? Um, what size of the camera? It really makes it to where this works more like a manual camera where if you shoot manual a lot, that's not that bad. Uh, you set your ISO as low as possible for Light, for light painting, you set your, your ISO as low as possible. Make sure your shutter speed is as long as you possibly can. Uh, make it and then your focal length is just kind of in the same, in the right space of where it's supposed to be to focus. And then just practice working on light painting. It sounds great in theory, but unless you're gonna sit there and do a lot of testing to make sure that everything works out perfectly, it becomes much more of a burden than it does a pleasure. And I'm all for, I'm all for making a fun, activity for everybody to do instead of something that it's like well if this didn't work now the second one that i did this is the one i shot most of my stuff on which was the which was slow camera it was great there was a there was a lot of detail oh there's me uh there's a lot of stuff on there that you can work with so you have uh your iso your focal length your exposure it's kind of there at the top so if i'm doing light photography they have a light trail button on there click it Go on, start doing the light painting. Super easy, very, very cool. The one thing that, and this is, seems to be in all these apps, is make sure that you turned on the save to camera roll or save photo whenever you take an image. Because the first night I did this, it wasn't on, and I did a lot more paintings, and I missed all of them because I didn't save them because I didn't know it was not saving the cam, saving it directly to the camera. Uh, that that was that I was not mad, not happy. I was not happy. Finally, Yamra is really good too, but again, this is, for somebody who does a lot of photography with a traditional camera, that app, this app is great, but if you're not, you just want to do light painting, um, you got to know, set, you, you have to know how to set up a camera. Low, uh, your ISO needs to be really low again, working around 100, your shutter speed should be uh, very low as well, which means, so the shutter is open for an extended amount of time. So it's not open for one fifth of a second. It's open up for five seconds. Make sure that you're doing it right. It's the same thing when I'm loading a kiln. If I don't put in the right thing, instead of having stuff come out of the kiln, it's going to melt, blow up or break, uh, just because I'm off by one number. Same thing for photography. So make sure that you are putting in there the right settings, uh, your shutter speed, very low, your ISO, very low, your aperture, middle, high. So that eight to 12 for your aperture, if you can change all the F-stops, 
Uh, personally, I like to set up the grid, which they have in here. It's again, it's a nice camera app. It works really good, but if you want something simple, um, you got to know a little bit more about your, your how to change the settings. So, uh, so those are a couple apps that I got into that I was using. There's a ton more apps. Those ones were all free. That's the number one thing. I want to make sure they were all free apps. Um, so all free apps that I was using to create the create with and they work fine. They work great. They saved the camera. Um, you do have to pay for certain aspects of, of some of them. Uh, so like when you start moving around, you're like, oh, I want to do this. So you have to pay to upgrade to the pro version of it. So, uh, but for what you want to do, if you want to do light trails, it's there. Now, another main concern for this was bridging the experience gap. So the pro photographer versus the amateur, the newbie, the you haven't done these things before versus somebody who's done a lot of this or you've, you've done photography for years. This is one of those things where this is a whole family experience. I, I, I totally think that everybody should play around with this as a group uh, because if you do it by yourself, it's just kind of, it's fun, but um, I think having having parents involved is a lot more a lot more fun. Getting everybody involved for this, where you're, once you've got that camera set up, you move over in front of it to get the light source. So I've had students who are um, wheelchair bound or uh, limited mobility and having them out in a space to where they can move just a little bit with a light and create the different shapes, create the different objects, uh, still gives them the same experience of creating these light paintings without having to deal with uh, any disability that they that they're trying to that they're working with and that makes it li life a lot easier so now I even found a way to incorporate the Chromebook using this so if you're a student who now if you're a student who has a Chromebook and you're trying to figure out what can I do with my Chromebook during this you can easily pull up a screen image of a different color and use that color out there to let that be captured by and you can use that the color from the screen to work in your light capture and your light painting and you totally get all of the experience of doing everything uh with multiple different with multiple different tools so we're using the chromebook as adaptive technology or incorporating it by pulling up these swatches of color or pulling up different images lines if you just want to do like a like a zebra pattern or something on there and moving that across the screen that's going to transfer into the image as well and it's going to bring out different design patterns in the image and you can totally change this up from an elementary level all the way to a high school level or if we're with, dealing with the elementary kids where you can do basic shape design we can do structure of color how color moves across the space um dealing with glow patterns dealing with the way that light leaches out there's a lot of things that you can do that are most uh generic standards that we deal with and then again you're just kind of upping that level for middle school or we're expanding on adding more lines adding more structure adding more color into that image or just changing up the different facets and finally, for high school, you can use this to really start to accentuate sculptures. You can use this to accentuate uh, movement design, where you're understanding the process and methodologies of how. And we can look into our classic artisans, uh, Raphael, who was the master of light in painting, and how he could have light convey around an object. And you had these these nuances of, of Renaissance painting involved. And you can bring that into a modern landscape where we're taking these designs we're taking these designs we're taking these images and we're trying to make a new art form out of it it's a lot of fun i, I love doing this stuff I'm trying to expand expand your knowledge expand your palette so finally here we're just trying to get creative with our lights we're trying to exp expand our knowledge so go out there play around have fun do some fun stuff get get weird images weird is fun always uh figure out how to write in in the sky find out figure out how to use light to uh, to create different paintings as painting structures, just experiment. So thanks for coming to class today, guys. Hope you guys got something out of today's awesome lesson. As always, this is a part of a series, so there's more videos involved. Make sure you guys check out everything out, learn as much as you possibly can. And as always, let's take care of our homework, which is like, subscribe, share, all of your platforms. If you had a question during today's class, don't forget to raise your hand down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my students. As always, I'll see you guys next class. So until then, later guys.